everybody, Zach again, NinjaTour.com. Coming in, making a video for you today. Um, I've done these videos before, and I'm gonna have to do them, I guess, continually on and off, you know, over the course of time, uh, that I, where I need to remind people that, listen, I am not your Bible teacher. I am not your prophet. I am not your pastor. I'm not your guru. Um, I'm not your leader. I am just a commentator. That's what I do. I commentate on the Bible. On this channel, I talk about the Bible. I talk about scripture. I talk about where I see scripture applying to our lives. Um, I see, I talk about what is relevant, what is not relevant, some of the inconsistencies and um, apologetics that go along with scripture and people's um, own interpretations and doctrines. All that is all, it's just commentary. Commentary. That's all it is, commentary. And you guys, some of you people, when I go off on something so stupid, you guys get all in a huff thinking that, oh, this is not good fruit. This is, I'm like, what? This is the problem we're at in America today, in general. In general. You say, you know, Barack Obama, I think your policies are absolutely horrible. And what do they do? They turn around and call you a racist. No, I didn't, I didn't say I was against him because he's black. I'm against him because his policies are absolutely just nonsense. But they'll come around, turn around, and call you a racist. That's not at all where, what I was saying. Someone will come on my channel or respond to something I've said on my channel or leave a comment or send an email. And unless you, first off, unless you tell me not, and a lot of people do, unless you tell me not to publicize or not to, uh, uh, um, you know, make public the message you've sent me or email, private message, email, whatever, uh, then I have the opportunity. So usually if I take an email, I'll ask. I, if someone sends me an email, I'll ask, hey, listen, do you mind if I use this in a video? Is that okay if I use this in a video? And a lot of times people are like, yeah, sure, fine. And usually I don't have time to get around to making a video on it, sorry. Um, but when you send me or when you post a public comment under my video, and it's a hot button topic or a topic that I feel passionately about, I am I could respond publicly and call you out and put your picture and your name because you left the comment in a public setting. How does that not make sense? Where is that a problem? For some of you people, and I don't care, you guys, you know, you guys get angry at me and you get upset with me. You think I've done wrong on this. I don't lose sleep over it. I don't. I absolutely don't. Um, and it's because I have already set boundaries in my life of where I will go and where I will not go. And sometimes those boundaries move a little bit based on work, you know, wisdom and, and learning um, and just life experience. Uh, but for the most part, my boundaries are set. And so I, I, I know how far I will take things and, and um, I know what is absolutely fair game and what is not in my life. And if people have a problem with that, listen, this just isn't the channel for you. It's not the channel for you. There are people who have tried to put me on a pedestal as a teacher or uh, um, a leader or a pastor or some kind of guru out there, and I'm not that person. Again, if you want that kind of person, there are plenty of others out there. I'm just going through Scripture the way I see fit, the way I see it, the way, I, the way it appears to me, and at my own pace. That's how I go through Scripture. And my commentary is only my commentary. I have never had a burning bush moment. There's never been a time when the Father says, you know, this beaming light has come down and this audible voice has appeared around me or in my head and says, Zach, you go forth and teach. No, I think that's what all men ought to do. I think you should do that anyway. You should, you know, the, the Bible should be the foremost primary thing to guide your life and to guide the people in your around you, your children who you're raising, guide their life, and then to, you know, live by what the scriptures tell how tell you how to live. It's that simple. And to talk about, you know, because really that is the Father's wish for all wish. That's a bad word. It's the Father's desire that he would that all of mankind would keep his commandments and statutes and judgments. Which brings blessing. And to, to not do that brings curse. Some of you people, you know, if I said your mom is ugly and she wears combat boots, well, you know, that'd be a little bit past the line. That'd be a little bit personal. I'm not trying to get, I don't, I'm not like, it, by telling you your idea is ridiculous and idiotic is not personal. It just says that your, your idea is ridiculous and idiotic. Your interpretation of scripture is ridiculous and idiotic. You know, this last example with the seed thing. 
It says you shall not sow diverse seed in your field. It's that simple. But people will try to, like one guy left a comment. It's like, I wish people would stop trying to find excuses on how to not obey God's word. Exactly. I pinned that comment up at that video. Because that's exactly what so many people try to do. Zach, yeah, that just wouldn't be easy for me because, see, I have this three by three foot space and I want to grow corn, cucumber, squash, tomatoes, uh, peppers, all in this space. And, and, if, and, if, and if I do what you're saying to do, I just can't do it. And so it's too hard, Zach. You know, think of the little people, Zach. I know you've got 50 acres, but, you know, think of us with, you know, little three by three foot yards. You know, what are we going to do? I don't know. I mean, do what you can do. That's all you can do. Then do it. I don't suggest putting cucumber, squash, tomatoes, peppers, corn, whatever else inside of a three foot, three foot space because really you're kind of, you know, filling up that spot with all kinds of diverse seeds. And the Bible says don't sow diverse seeds in your field. You know, separate things. You know, plan things out. If you can't do that where you're at, fine. Then don't do it. It doesn't apply to you. Again. I'm not your leader. I'm not your guru. Not your pastor. Not your whatever shepherd. I'm not. Okay. I'm just a commentator. That's all I do. I get on here and I commentate. I talk about the Bible. I talk about scripture. <clears throat> and you're never going to hear me say your mom is ugly and she wears combat boots because that would be over the line. That would be personal. But telling you that your idea is wrong, it goes against scripture, it's idiotic, ridiculous. That's not, that's not something personal against you. It's just saying, I don't agree. Absolutely not. And usually I give reasons why. I don't just say it. I'm not one of these people who just say that's, that's crazy and then don't give you a reason why I think it's crazy. I'm going to, you know, back my position up with scripture. Do not sow in your field diverse seed. I mean, what else? It can't be more. Co well, Zach, I don't really think that applies to seeds. I think it applies to the future. You know, GMOs. You know, Jesus knew that it would be. Well, first off, Jesus didn't say that. Moses did. Moses somehow knew about GMOs in the future. So that really doesn't apply to me. If I buy heirloom seeds, Zach, then I can put all these seeds in the same box, in the same field, mix them all together, and it'll be fine. It's completely okay because my cucumber is not going to... Um, Merge with the tomatoes, Zach. Oh, I don't know. Maybe they won't. I'm telling you, the the woman who I had talked to at that fellowship, she had planted her asparagus too close to rose bushes, you know, within the rose bushes, and they grew thorns. And these were not natural asparagus with thorns, okay? Not the wild asparagus. Nobody eats those, okay? And those, th those asparagus, when they're only that tall, the thorns they do have are really soft. You, you wouldn't even feel them. She reached down, picked the, was cutting the asparagus, and hurt herself. She's like, ow! That's, that's got thorns on it. Ow! If you've ever seen a wild asparagus, they don't have, the thorns are very soft and when, when they're only that tall, or even this tall. I mean, and they're big. Um, folks, things can happen. There's a reason why the Father says don't put diverse seed in your field. And you know what? I don't even need the reason. I don't need to have a reason. Him saying it is good enough for me. That's it. I'm making the point of this because, guys, I, I've, I've ever done, I've done this before. I've done this where something gets me hot under the hat. And um, I've done a number of videos. In, I think the alcohol was one of those. I did a number of videos for that. There's been a couple of other videos I've done this for where I get really upset about just the responses, the idiotic responses that come to me. Uh, someone once, someone said, Zachary Bauer, since when does a teacher berate or call out a student in front of the class? Like it or not, you earn the title of teacher. Really? I mean, I haven't got a notice in the mail or anything. Where do, where, do, where does that title come from? Is it like a, a WWF heavyweight title? Is it like on a belt or something? Or what, is it like a certificate that you put on the wall? T teacher. What, what? That's ridiculous. Number number, the second thing is, what school did you go to? Even when I was in younger grades, elementary school and stuff, we that was still back in the day where a few teachers, not all, a few teachers did have paddles in the class. And see, only, the only thing worse 
than getting paddled in the class was getting it getting paddled in front of class where the whole class could see you. It was the humiliation, which was really the training tool here, not just the paddle. The humiliation, the public humiliation, we don't do that anymore. You see, they used to hang rapists in the town square until they were dead. See, it was humiliation. We don't do that today. We used to put people up at a firing squad in front of others so people could watch. We used to have public hangings in this country. We don't do that anymore. Why did we do that? Was because public humiliation is the tool that trains, that corrects, that brings correction. And we're supposed to love correction. We, we don't live in that society anymore. Today, if you correct someone on an error on their part, they call you hate-filled, you know, unfruitful or bad fruit. But that's not it at all. I mean, I went to the second half of my, you know, young schooling, went to military school starting in junior high. I mean, man, they took, we talk about public humiliation if you screwed up. I mean, what school did you go to? The best schools do that. <laughs> call you out publicly when you say something ridic ridiculous. Absolutely unbelievable. Um, yeah, so if, again, if, if, if this offends you, if this hurts your feels, okay, this is not, if you need a stress card to watch my videos, this is not the channel for you, okay? It's just not. Go somewhere else. There's lots of places you can go. But see, I'm going to call things the way they are. I'm going to be re I'm going to be completely realistic with you. I'm going to try to be as honest with you as I, as I possibly can. It's one of the reasons I don't take money. It's one of the reasons I know a lot of people have helped out with um, uh, Jamie's reconstruction, you know, with the things she's going through right now. That's great, and I appreciate that. But you won't find PayPal buttons on my website. You won't find PayPal buttons or donation things on my new tutorial videos. Um, I do get monetization for uh, some of my videos, and that's because I do pay hosting fees with that. Um, but... Uh, when I go to conferences and speak, people will give me money, and that money goes to 400 West Street, uh, the Open Arms Pantry in Huntsville, Arkansas. And when I come home with that cash, and that money, whatever checks I get, it goes there. Because I'm not going to be beholden to you. Because if you give me $1,000, and I take that, and I cash that check, and I use it for my own personal expenses or whatever, then, you know, the day you come up to me and say, Zach, you know, I really don't agree with your teaching on teaching, your video on such and such, such and such. Yeah, I'd like you to change that. Yeah, yeah, I feel, hmm, I better do that because if I don't, he might not give me another $1,000. See how that works? Mm -mm. I'm going to be my own man, um, and I'm going to do what I feel is best, um, according to Scripture. And um, I may be wrong sometimes, may be wrong. I'm not going to say I'm perfect. I'm not going to say I'm always right. Uh, but uh, I am going to try to be as best as I can, you know, right on the way on my thinking of scripture. And when, and there's things I don't know, there's plenty of things I don't know about scripture, lots of them. Uh, but the things I feel passionately about, you know, when it's black and white, you know, what to do, things that fail the Deuteronomy 13 test or things that, uh, you know, that go outside the boundaries of Deuteronomy 4.2, I will absolutely call it. And for someone to say, well, Zach, I think this only applies to GMOs. Yeah. Where's that in the book? I don't see that in the text. You're adding, you're adding to Torah. Because when you start saying, oh, this only means to G this only talks about GMOs. That's not what the text says. You're adding. Stop. Stop it. All right. So we're clear. I'm not your teacher. You know, you're only shepherd. You're only teacher. You're only person that you should be looking up to about what is right and wrong is, number one, the scripture and Messiah, who came to walk out that scripture perfectly to give an example for you to watch. That's it. Messiah. That's it. It's not me. Sorry, guys, not me. You start, you keep following man, you're going to be in a whole world of hurt. Ooh. 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 All right, we'll leave it at that. Go home, read your Bible. Thanks.